with Samira's official reveal trailer and with her release on PBE. It's not a surprise to see that Riot also released her lore on Universe to keep the hype around her rolling. When it comes to a champion's placement in Runeterra, Riot usually does one of two things. Either a champion comes from a certain region and they push the lore of that region forward, the best recent example of that would be Aphelios, or the champion bridges the lore of two or more different regions. A good example here would be Seth's secret job as a Reckoner fighting in Noxian pits that were built in Ionia, or Silas's escape from Demacia which led to him traveling to Freljord. Today, as you'll see, we are going to build a little bridge between Noxus and Shurima as we dive into the lore of Samira, the Desert Rose. Samira comes from a city called Amakra, which unfortunately we can't find on the map. And that could be because in the present days, the city is ruined. But we know it should be roughly in the middle of Shurima, to the east of the Great Sai. And for a fun fact, Malzahar also grew up here. But he left this place in pursuit of his visions of the Void, years before Samira's story even happened. Anyway, in this city, young Samira and her parents lived as street performers. They dazzled, charmed and awed onlookers, which thrilled Samira, but worried her parents. Despite how much fun Samira had in the streets, her parents wished she could enjoy a more stable life. Unfortunately, this wish would not come to pass. The day Samira turned 14, during the night, armed strangers invaded Amakra. Thankfully, Samira was able to hide inside the roof of their house, but she still watched what was happening outside. These strangers invoked the name of some ancient mage, and they seized innocent villagers. Interestingly enough, since Samira and Sivir are supposed to be roughly the same age, with Samira being older, since Sivir was the one who opened the tomb of the emperors and released Zerath, that would mean that these fanatics who invaded Amakra and who obviously praised Zerath, which is obvious from Samira's interactions. Zerath, your people ended my home. I will end your existence. Well, they likely did it while Zerath was still locked in the tomb. Which means that somehow, even from within the darkness underneath Shurima, Zerath still held some influence over the people above. Anyway, the night these fanatics invaded Amakra, many people were slain before Samira's eyes. But she did not cry. She did not scream. Instead, she was taken over by her anger. Not at the killers, but at herself for hiding. Throughout her entire life, she had never felt crippled by fear. Even when she attempted the most dangerous stunts. But in that moment, Samira hated herself and vowed never to feel so scared and helpless again. Although they got wounded, Samira, her parents and a handful of others managed to escape to Belzoon, which was one of the first Shuriman port cities to fall under Noxian rule. So, to the people of Amakra, Noxus provided a safe haven. But to Samira, Noxus opened a door. While the other refugees were happy to live a quiet life here, Samira was determined to reclaim her courage and make sure she would never be afraid again. And so she walked into the streets alone, because since her parents were still injured, they couldn't. Suddenly, performing was no longer a job. It was her stage to be fearless. Slowly, she outdid herself with every stunt, even when no one bothered to look. But it was still not enough to support her family. That was when Samira stumbled upon a call to join a Noxian warband. Of course, drawn to the excitement and the financial rewards she would get, she signed up. There, in the warband, her physical strength and agility amazed her comrades. Swift with her blade, sharp with her aim, and with years of performing, Samira reveled in her raw athleticism, excelling in combat, but flattering in discipline. After two years of training, her recklessness frustrated her commanding officers. Except for one, Captain Indari. A person whom Samira often mentions in her quotes. Indari was a great captain. She taught me how to shoot. <laughs> I taught myself how to kill. As a former saboteur, Indari valued Samira's fearlessness. And she offered her a position in her private warband. Which was a specialized unit charged with missions that were deemed too dangerous for standard Noxian soldiers. And so, hungry for the dangers it promised, Samira agreed without hesitation. After this, she fully embraced the Noxian culture, 
finding her own strength and style amid life and death shootouts and breathtaking sword fights. In her free time, Samira would visit her family and tell them about the stories, which she immortalized on her body in the form of tattoos, each representing only her most unforgettable feats. As a cool fact, Samira also has a quote referencing this in the game. Thrilling! Ha! Maybe I'll get a tattoo to celebrate the occasion. Either way, to her, what mattered most was challenging herself to turn danger into thrill and thriving off the constant risk that made her feel truly alive. But then, one day, following orders which came from the Noxian capital city, Indari's unit found themselves on the Rockrund Plains, which we can find on the map in southern Noxus, not too far away from Piltover and Belzoon. They were sent here to crush an uprising of people who wanted to leave the Empire. As the warband located the enemy stronghold and approached the rebel leader, the fortress exploded. But not knowing fear anymore, Samira dove headfirst into the chaos, even as the fortress collapsed, which resulted in her permanently injuring her right eye. Feeling neither scared nor helpless, she wasted no time in finding Indari and dragging her to safety. Unfortunately, Indari sustained a much more serious injury. The captain could no longer move her legs. This mission made Indari hate herself for failing as their leader. And so, when all the survivors returned, she immediately disbanded the unit. Discharged and with no other opportunities rousing her interest, Samira came back home to Belzoon. But living in that relatively quiet port city was no longer a lifestyle she could endure. So instead, Samira returned to the Noxian capital and looked for Indari. Since Indari was the only captain who supported her during her training, she believed her former captain understood the thirst for challenge in ways nobody else could. So Samira wanted to use Indari's connections in the military and in the noble houses of Noxus. When she found Indari, she proposed they team up again in a new partnership, where Indari could operate behind the scenes to find Samira some dangerous mercenary work. Reluctantly, Indari agreed. But since they were on their own, she left Samira alone on the battlefield with no support. And Samira couldn't be happier. She eagerly undertook missions meant for entire warbands and still succeeded. Her daredevil reputation spread far and wide, from beating a Zonite Canberran in hand-to-hand -hand combat to being the lone survival of a Bilgewater raid. Samira completed every job no matter the odds. With Indari's connections, even the Noxian High Command accepted her, recognizing there was no one better suited to take on their most dangerous missions. Now Samira shows no sign of slowing down. She can be found scaling mountain cliffs one day and arm wrestling outlaws in crowded taverns the next. But wherever she may be, one thing is certain. Samira never fails to find her next big thrill. And that is Samira's entire bio. As always, new champions tend to get extra color story when they are released onto live servers. And I have a feeling that her color story will tell us about one of her mercenary missions in Tereshni. Because that would explain this quote. Bah, like Tereshni all over again. Interestingly enough, her bio didn't mention the fact that she is using black powder pistols. Which is referencing one of Swain's stories called the black powder plot. What's awesome about this story is that not only did it reveal that the black powder is being mined in the Rockrund Plains, which ironically is the very place where Samira lost her eye, but this older story also described how Noxus was fighting against the locals to secure these mines. And now, years later, Samira revealed that not only were these locals people who wanted to separate from the Empire, but now it also makes sense why the enemy base exploded and crippled Indari. It's because this place gathered explosive materials. And in fact, the commanders agreed that in order to overtake this place, they might have to use brute force and burn everything. So technically, the base exploding could be another friendly fire on the side of Noxus. I mean, Noxus is known for that. So, with the context from the Black Powder plot, it all now makes sense. And it only shows us how good Riot's been lately at checking their older stories and adding more depth to them. Speaking of which, since with Samira's story we also got a lore update for Sona, whose adoptive family is also being mentioned in other stories, such as the story of Quinn, 
Beware, because next we are diving into yet another lore gem. 